Then, today and tomorrow, the world before the last reset was vastly run by Moors, far ancient Amorians, and the Americas was known as the American Empire, Amorian Empire. The mud floods that had occurred changed the whole dynamic of the world with its vapor canopy, which reduced the oxygen needed for giant plant and human life to strive. Just like the world today is run by Europeans with their religious empire in the time of the Moors of America, the Monacan Empire was established, also called the American Empire. The Moors in that time had created and established Islam, which meant peace in their linguistics. It was founded in America and many states and cities still bear the names associated with their established religion. Many of their beliefs were derived from the Qur Beth and other religions, and they termed themselves Muslims, as a mosque was the new term used to identify a temple, the place of religious gathering. During this time, the Catholic Christian Empire was also established globally in European countries. The mud floods created the conditions of which this religious empire could flourish to other parts of the world by way of crusades. Before the mud floods, the Moors of America had fallen from their higher self, as greed, lust, and everything that harms slowly crept into their consciousness and abuses of all sorts began to take place by them. As this is what power and authority ultimately breeds at some point, Europeans were treated much like the Negro slaves were treated during slavery and in some cases even worse. During this fall from grace, a global reset would change the world and a new order would arise, one which never forgot the pains of the old world. These lighter-skinned children of the Moors of Spain who were treated badly by them consequently formed their own nation and would grow to rebel against the image of the Moor and create the mindset that their skin color was superior than that of their darker kin. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. The term Matamoros arose amongst the Spanish invaders of South America, which means killer of the Moors, as these ones would seek out these people who once ruled over them and enslaved them and their kin in their own lands in South America. Stories, histories would be written to say these Moors came from Africa, so to make all believe that they have no true ties to the land, leaving the invaders to maintain control of it all. The same would later happen amongst the European as they had been banished into the European mountainous lands of Caucasia after causing troubles amongst their people and tribes in Africa and other lands. It was later in ancient history that some Moors would come to raise them to a civil station by teaching them how to bathe, cook, clean, and so on. Till this day, some still pay homage to the image of the Moor for civilizing them, while some simply mock them. Many of these people honored the Moors for coming to them and recognizing them as a part of the human family, while others never forgot their banishment. The Spanish would conquer South America and move upwards to the north, making it as far as California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, later ceding these lands to the United States. The lighter the skin was, now the new standard, and many looked down upon the old ruler's image and caused great harm upon them and their children. Most Europeans living in America at that time were at peace with the Moors of North America, living in harmony with the social class Moors as well as the tribal Moors, as they themselves had come from an inferior station in life. When the idea of killing and enslaving the Moors arose in North America amongst the Europeans, many wealthy Europeans saw an opportunity for financial gains as the Moors were big cotton and tobacco farmers and sought out to make slaves of the Moors of the North and take their lands from them though not all states would participate in slavery. Plantations, which grew cotton and tobacco, were the wealthy businesses at the time, and these were in the southern states of the Americas. These plantations were once the plantations owned by Moors, who were misled to participate into a new system of land ownership called title ownership. They were coerced to describe their lands in meets and bounds and to record such in a land office by being told it would protect them from thieves who could try to claim their lands as their own unless they could show they had superior title. Once recorded, they were not told of paying land taxes for the filing of their property and were thus defaulted on and lost their property to these newly formed colonial states. These newfound homeless Moors were then told that they had to go work off their debt on another plantation, and without much of a choice, they did. Unbeknownst to them, these plantations were not the rightful possessions of the Europeans who now sat them, but the plantations of other Moors who had been swindled by the same system and moved elsewhere. As many worked in protest to the trickery they found themselves in, rebellions arose as the light of this fact came to surface. Because of this, those old landowners were hunted down and killed. Their offsprings would then be titled as Issue and classified as slaves from their mothers in perpetuity. 
These Moors were whipped and even killed if they tried to learn how to read, as they could uncover the plot that had befallen their mothers and fathers. Their new masters became their teachers, and their book of education for them was their Catholic Christian holy book, which was also called the Slave Bible, which they taught the newly enslaved Moors to obey their masters as the word of God in that they were chosen by God to be their masters. It was not long afterwards that this mindset exploded across America, and later, even the world. The architecture of the old world was largely destroyed and or remodeled as it bare evidence of its old world owners. This was the true New World Order. The World Wars I and II were really about the enslavement and elimination of the Moorish power in the world. World War III will be no different. They instituted laws to make life hard for the Moors to ever regain the power and authority they once held. As the fear of retribution fills their hearts and minds, as they know their methods were not just. A global empire has been established by the European nations, but the rightful heirs to those lands are those peoples of hue worldwide. They still hold superior title as aboriginal title, with tort claims attached amongst other grievances. Law governs all events. Because of this, non-European peoples are considered a threat to the establishment of white supremacy as its foundations are built on everything that harms. So valid claims could topple their empire and its power. To this end, they have established a world system of domination that has them in the power seats of nations and they would rather kill us all than to give it up, no matter how just the claims may be. The noble names of Moorish royal families have been taken and used by these people to usurp the power and control they hold in law. A search of the old world black nobility bloodlines will show the family crest of these old world royalties. Law as we know it was first established by Hammurabi Bey, a Moor, and as such cannot be defeated, only usurped. For this purpose, the Prussian educational system was introduced to make obedient Pavlovian slaves, ignorant of the law and obedient to its expounders. As the moral law came more into play in the minds of the people, these same masters would promote entertainment, pornography, alcohol, and everything that harms unto the public to distract not only the Moors from the truth, but later all, whom a hidden class of rulers would deem Gentiles or Goyim. These people believe that according to their unholy book, that they are entitled to own between 2,500 to 4,500 slaves each. I'm not making this up. To this end, they have been in the process of making this a reality for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And to do this would require a vast and secret agenda involving those in high places worldwide. These people don't think in short-term goals, but long-term goals, and to them, the ends justify the means. To be successful, they would plant within governments around the world, people of whom they have compromised in some form or fashion to ensure loyalty to their demands. You know who they are? The world would have to become a surveillance state in order for them to be successful in reaching their goal, as this would ensure complete and total control of every human on the planet. This means, as I have said, that if you are not one of their kin, then you are merely a pawn in their game, a Gentile or Goyim, who has no rights granted to them from God, and that are to view them as God's chosen people. Why do you think Putin opened the vaults to reveal the truth behind their deceit? Why is he not following their agenda and protocols? Yet look at the world today, and you will see that no one is saying a thing about it. It is not the front-page story of any major newspaper or news TV show. Why? Because they own or control it all, and they will squash any news that goes against their agenda. The whole premise of their being is that they are the chosen people of God, yet they do not believe in Jesus or God, and will lock you up in the Holy Land if you even mention that name, yet they tell you that the land they occupy was given to them by God. Are you present? If the word of God as you believe it to be is really holy, then why is this truth not changing the world right now? Why are those of the image of the true holy people according to the Bible not being respected at this moment? Can you not see the seeds of division that have been bred into you? The truth revealed and the world cares not, yet they say they love God and Jesus. It's not hard to discern who a Hitanti is. That there is no power in the universe including you, God, creator of heaven and earth, he who fills the infinite expanse of, of space. I, as a Jew, am stronger than you. My name is Israel, he who wrestles with God and is victorious. I will die with my faith intact. There is nothing you can do, no Hitlers, no Gestapo, no SS that can be sent against me that will ever... And no Hamas. And no Hamas. This is the state the world now finds itself in. 
ruled by the negative forces of men, whose aim is the enslavement of the world for the benefit of their kin. Money, deceit, and murders are their tools for dominance, power, and supremacy. These ones worship not the creator of all, but the negative creations of their thoughts. Lakazan, a.k.a. Satan, they seek to enslave the world via greed implanted in the minds of man by the wealth they have created out of thin air. Like the Moors who were scammed out of their lands, so will all humanity be moved by the threat of force, hunger, etc., to bow down to this negativity which is now pervading the earth at this time. They are broadcasting to the world their public agenda via the WEF, the WHO, and other institutions as public announcements. The moral shall become immoral, the just, unjust, in the name of survival. Are you not blind? Do you not see the time you are in? Lines are being drawn. Your long-awaited Armageddon has started. It's just a matter of time before it touches you. The same people who would seek to kill off the image of the Earth's first inhabitants, the Amorians, their most ancient ancestors, are the same ones who think nothing of you but a tool to be utilized. Don't be the frog who didn't jump out of the frying pan because the heat was so gradual it didn't realize that it was getting hot. But take action to inform those who can do something about it, to affect the change you want to see in the world. Yet don't be fooled by their Messiah who will bring peace, as that is all a part of their plan. Also, give not up your rights for some assumed protection, but trust in Aradia's master plan. And fear not. For you are not the body nor the soul, but a spirit, a thought form of the Creator. And the Creator loves all those thoughts who love the Creator and its creations. And these ones shall see a better life for their soul than those who love not their Creator. Life is just a dream, but how you live it determines the next reality to be experienced by you as soul. These bodies were originally designed to last 1,000 years and are barely able to make it past 100 today. All will face their actions at the end of one's life, as this life was given unto you for the learning and enjoyment of your soul as the master plan of Aradia. The negative mind is an unthinking, unknowing mind. It knows not who or what it is, only that it is. To this end, hot awaits these souls who tread the path of negativeness and ignorance, for ignorance is not bliss. Man created hell and placed it on earth as well as within it, and he summons the dead to play in his court and takes out his pen to sentence one to punishment in his dungeon's hell. They even make you pay for it. These ones assume they are the judge of man. Woe unto them. Aradia created Hod and placed it far away from its positive creations to be the home of those thoughts of negativity, governed by its negative thoughts. The Creator is not found in this place as this place has its own rulers. As we all descend from the Amorians, the first people created by the Creator, it is only right that we bring justice to their descendants for the redress of their grievances, those called African Americans, Blacks, or Moorish Americans today. The world knows what they have endured and how long they have been enduring it. The Hopi way is the approved way of the Creator for all time. The Palmas, the Blue Star people, are the saviors of humanity, who taught the Hopi in ancient times the way that man should go. Let us protect the Hopi in all life as we are all one thought of the Creator and live in the Hopi way in our modern systems of life. To the Hopi Ahailam, those Hopi who have lost their way and tread the path of the worldly, return and bow in reverence to the old ways and those who still hold true to those ways, that you may be an example for all to see the spirit of the Creator. Clean up your act, clean up your lands, clean up your mind, for you are favored by the Creator, show thyself approved. I, the Proctor Apsaras II, have delivered to the world in the way in which it could be received best. The Holy Q are Beth, the words of the Creator via video transmissions. Take these words as serious as they are, for this is what the world has been waiting for, and there is no excuse in the end of life. That one did not know, or that it was not made knowable. Remember, he who keeps wisdom to himself has no wisdom at all. Therefore share these videos, but force no one to watch them. Do not come unto the Hopi unless you come with purity of heart, words, and deeds, as this is the way one should come unto all mankind. I will also state that like the many brave souls who have come before me to expose the truths that they felt the world needed to know, and were met with an untimely death thereafter, that although their sacrifice for the greater good was largely ignored and the next day passed without any true investigation, Still I make this declaration that I, the Hideon Proctor, am not suicidal. If you have watched these videos and or visited the website and read the pages of the QR Beth, know that you have taken the first steps to become a Hideon. 
the knowledgeable people of the Creator. And if you choose to take the next step and become a Hideon, you are welcomed. To become a new joiner, visit the site listed at the end of each video and click on the New Joiner button. May your days be filled with joy and happiness, and may we all come together as one family called life. Apsaras II. Ahailam, 